Hello everyone, welcome to yet another episode and in today's video we'll be reviewing a pair of Edward Green. How's it going my friends? Welcome back to a new video, new unboxing, new review. I'm in the middle of moving to Italy, so soon uh, I'll be able to produce much more videos, but I still managed to check this one out as uh, it has been in the works for quite a while now. And what this is, is a pair of Edward Green shoes, specifically the model Cardiff in uh, what you would call dark brown suede. I think they call it mink suede. And this is a mate order I got with some lasted shoe trees and the price for something like this would run about 1450 US dollars. So that's a lot of money. So the question is, is it really worth it? And that's what we're going to find out today. So stay tuned, especially for the endings. Um, Edward Green is a brand that uh, I always knew about. It's a really high-end brand uh, making shoes in Northampton in the UK has a very stellar reputation. It's a very expensive brand, but still machine welted. And I did some digging around, you know, they have boot makers in their, in their name and their motto on their logo. So they do have a very rich history from 1890 and rich military history as well. And for the last 20, 30 years, they've been doing classic British shoes, you know, very contemporary, very classic looking in styles. So the only reason that I hadn't tried them before was because I was unwilling to spend so much money on a pair that is machine welted and machine made, purely machine made, uh, when I could buy something theoretically better. And mostly because of the styling that did not speak to me so much. I like a bit more, you know, aggressive and fun. So of course, what we're going to do today in uh, the video is what we always do. We're going to take a look at the shoes for what they are, the quality, the value, and if I'm happy or disappointed. And uh, we're gonna talk also about sizing and availability and all the good stuff after the close-up. So let's get going with uh, the close-up and in-depth review. All right, my friends, let's begin the close-up. First, very quickly, I'm gonna show you the box, which is uh, a little disappointing in a way. I mean, it's just a box. So I don't see any branding logo on the top for some reason. Uh, here on the side, you can see that, you know, there's like the logo and at least some handwritten notes of uh, what you have, the last, the size, etc. So this one is a UK eight and a half. When you open it up, uh, actually, this is really Spartan. There is a really nice sort of like cloth that they have uh, for, you know, just putting your shoes on and in between. There are no shoe bags, at least on this uh, model that I have, but it was a uh, cancelled MTO from someone else, so maybe the shoe bags are not there. Uh, so please let me know. There is one uh, separator at least, and then you got your shoes, and that, that that's it. It's like uh, it's like I'm back home and I'm back in Sparta. So that's about it. Very simple unboxing. So let's move on. And here we go. Here's the what we call star of the show. Let's put this on the side and start with one of them. So this model is called the Cardiff, Edward Green Cardiff. And what it is, is pretty much, a, let's call it a semi-brogue derby. You can see the open lacing system here, five eyelets, uh, nice leather sole, uh, closed channel, and a pair of lasted shoe trees. At least I think they're lasted. And that's about it. So there is a medallion on the toe. You can see here, you can see the shape of the sole as well. We'll talk about it more. And there is uh, broguing and uh, details around everywhere around the shoe. And that's about it. Capto Derby, semi brogue, and that's about it. So, more on the actual shoe now. So, this model, as you can see here, uh, is on the 202 last, which is medium, or you can just say round. And here is another view. Pretty nice, pretty solid. Contemporary, and uh, what, what are my first thoughts about this? Uh, I do find it a little boring, but at the same time, I mean, it's, it's uh, Derby, and uh, it's uh, 
in suede, in dark brown suede, uh, what Edward Green calls mink suede. Uh, so it's quite versatile. I mean, you can wear it with almost anything but, you know, very businessy suits. And uh, I can tell you immediately that in the beginning I was a little bit, uh, not disappointed, but underwhelmed by the quality and the feel of the suede because the nap is very short. And uh, I, I didn't feel that it warranted the price, but as I explored this more and I you know, felt it a bit more. I mean, it's still it's still good, and it kind of grew on me. The color is really good and quite dark. I'm not sure where the word mink comes from, but in any case, it's very popular on the Galway, uh, the field boot. And then I'm like, okay, you know, that's decent shoe until my OCD kicked in, and we're gonna move on to the problem, at least what I think is a problem. 1450 US dollars and let me show you does the cap toe seem straight to you because to me it does not it looks wavy let's compare it there you go uh, so for me it appears wavy and I also noticed that the alignment and the leveling of the medallion is wrong it's not exactly straight. So a few more things is like, for example, then I started inspecting the shoes and you can see around here, around the facing that some of the broking has not been punched really well. Overall, uh, overall I'm not sure. Like uh, I felt instead of, uh, you know, buying homemade food, I ended up in uh, a bit of Taco Bell. So certainly underwhelming for the price. And uh, I kind of lost a bit of interest after that and I put them aside just to brainstorm a bit. Uh, overall, the rest of the stitching and the quality of the shoe is fine, I suppose. Nothing special. Uh, the laces are actually quite nice. Uh, <laughs> what a compliment. Then I looked at the back and uh, this is probably during transport, but there is a, you know, some place on the back that the nap has pretty much been destroyed uh, and is <laughs> you can see the coloring here. I'm not sure why it could have been transport or just the leather was sanded down too much. Uh, you can also sort of see it on the back of the other shoe, but then again, it has no shoe bags and nothing in the box. So maybe that's what happened. And what else? Oh, of course, sole. You can see some marks here because I took some photographs and I just placed them down, but they were pretty good. And uh, very interesting things here too. First of all, this is a closed channel sole. So you can see not stitching pretty much like the, the channel's hidden. You can see very, very few marks at the top that indicate that something you know was carved here. So very good job. There's no real fiddle back. Uh, it's more of a, like a beveled round waist here. And that's about it. And now I'm... Um, I remember that when I was doing some research, uh, I was checking Kirby Allison's review and it really, really bothered me what he said. He said he was talking about, uh, he was reviewing the Dover, which is an iconic split toe derby. And he was, you know, raving about it. Like it's the most amazing thing in the world. And while this is decent, uh, like the reasoning he gave behind all this was really baffling at most. For example, he said that the heel here is matching exactly the sole. Like, of course the color is gonna match, what do you expect? But the most incredible, uh, insulting thing I heard was that, look, it's made in England, so it gives it something like provenance and style. First of all, a friend of mine that is also a shoemaker told me that uh, he saw in the factory where he was making his soles in Spain, uh, that they were making some soles for Edward Green, so, uh, the stamp could be irrelevant, not that it matters on the quality of the sole, but like I wrote in my written review, I might as well then write made in England and tattoo it on my penis, uh, so it also has some provenance and style. How about that, right? Uh, and how about not? As far as the world goes, I mean, everything is trimmed okay. Uh, there are some places where uh, there are some markings here and there, but uh, nobody would care. The welt joint is really nice and you cannot see any problem and actually it's quite seamless. 
Uh, the heel is uh, properly stuck leather, so that's good. And I remember also Kirby was talking about the nails that are here on so many and they help the structure, which is pretty much rubbish because uh, I saw Beto's Leatherworks uh, take apart the sole on some vast shoes and what really mattered was underneath there were only like three nails connecting everything to the actual shoe. So this is more apparently decorative. What matters is what's underneath, uh, which I actually expected to be good. And that's about the shoes. I mean, appearance-wise, I don't know, they, they're, they're a bit underwhelming to me. Uh, they're sort of grew, you know, on me when uh, I checked them more and more and I uh, wore them a bit, but I have a difficult time paying that much money. And inside now. Actually, half-inch old, uh, stamped logos and nothing suede on the sides. Uh, everything actually is really well trimmed uh, on the top and the lining is really good and that's about it for the inside it's just the inside is quite good quality and uh, very 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 well taken care of and that's it well it's more to say I will uh, simply show you the shoe trees now so the shoe trees the shoe trees are a mystery because uh, the they say that they are lasted, I'm not sure, um, but they, I also heard that they fit maybe some other models or they fit different sizes as well. Uh, the quality of the, of the wood is actually really nice and polished, uh, other than some blemishes here and there. Uh, it's also a little bit hollowed, you know, see from the back as well, which shaves some weight. Uh, they're not travel light, but they're not heavy. They are, they are okay. You can take them on a travel with you. Uh, there is some uh, panel here, you know, telling Edward Green, etc. And uh, some sort of like a brush, you know, handle. It works fine. It's okay. Uh, it's nothing special, but maybe for the price uh, you have to pay for these. Uh, it's uh, quite, uh, quite a lot. I've seen better shoes, uh, sorry, better shoe trees. But still, you buy a pair like these, uh, at least get some proper shoe trees. So uh, I can recommend them if you end up this road. And I think that concludes my close-up of the Edward Green Cardiff. And uh, let's sum things up. And that was it. Quite a very interesting turn of events, I would say. Uh, but we will go through everything. Before we do show, I think uh, the best, the best thing I can do right now is just talk about the sizing so you know what to expect so this last which is the 202 I would say is more like a medium to round shape it's quite classic quite British uh, but it's not exactly spacious and roomy as you might expect you know for it to run true to size let's call it like this so it really depends on the individual but for me, who I'm usually a UK 8 or a US 9D, I took half a size up from my UK. So these are UK 8.5, so half a size up from your, my regular UK, which includes something like, let's say, Carmina or Crockett & Jones, right? So about the sizing, uh, I do feel that half a size up is probably better for me and possibly for most people, at least in Edward Green lasts, because of the way these shoes are meant to be worn and because you're looking for something comfortable, right? Uh, I do feel that I could wear a UK 8, but it could have been a little constricting and a little bit tight in certain spots, mostly not the instep, but mostly here on the sides, as well as maybe a little bit uh, at the heel at the beginning. I do enjoy a nice, comfortable, nice fit right now and eight and a half is probably the one I would go for. So my general advice for Edward Green, at least on their 202 and maybe the 82 lasts, is to size up half from your usual UK and from your US sizing, size down just half, not an entire size. So that's about it. But of course, always reach out to the retailer or, you know, wherever you buy it from, maybe directly from Edward Green and ask them for advice or the best possible fit at least. Because these, these babies are made to order, they're not returnable. 
and in some cases people have waited 12 months for them. Uh, I would say mostly closer to six would be a more regular turnaround, but uh, I've seen some people wait over a year for them and that's too much. So imagine you get these after so long and you see that they are either defective or you know something's wrong, like the capto is misaligned and is wavy or the medallion is placed not in the right way and there is a little bit scuffing on, on the back. So it was a little disappointing. I, we are talking about prices that, you know, you're starting to ask for perfection because the next step pretty much from ready to wear at these prices is bespoke mostly. And when you spend 1,500 US dollars on a pair, you want it at least to have, you know, a certain quality to it. My biggest problem is that uh, Edward Green, for example, prides itself for using the best leathers, you know, having excellent shoes, and also that during the factory process and the making process, even though they use machines, they use the same person, I'm quoting from them, the same person to, to do each step individually. For example, the person that cuts the uppers, the clicker, and makes them all into one and stitches them, is one person. So if one person does this, you know, they should really take care of small details like the stitching or whatever, especially since it's machine made, right? And to see that the care is not exactly there is a little disheartening because I know that for the same price, I can buy Paolo Scafora, I can buy Antonio Macariello, I can buy Norman Villalta, uh, Gaziano and Gierling, etc. And uh, I expect, uh, and I know that I will get a better shoe. Now you might be like, oh, well, the capto is like this, you will not really notice. Probably, you will not notice until you, unless you have really OCD like me, but uh, I notice now and I know it's there and that's it. And uh, when it comes to this, it's like I, I find it hard to believe that I would spend so much money and get a shoe that it does not meet my standards, whatever my standards are, right? So I'm not very happy with Edward Green. Uh, I'm not very happy uh, with uh, the shoes overall. Uh, they definitely are not my styling overall, but they do fit well. So I'm a bit on the fence if I'm gonna keep them or not. Uh, definitely they could have been better. And uh, I simply know that I can buy better shoes for the money. These are overpriced in my opinion. And I would uh, not spend more than $800 uh, or up to $1,000 maybe for them uh, if it was like retail. Uh, I can just buy better. Now, that's my opinion. If you like the shoes, if they fit you well and you're happy with plainly how they look and how they make you feel, then that's all you need to know. When you're talking about $1,500, US you are probably at the point where you don't care so much about the money because you have a quite a comfortable life and disposable income. But uh, if you're the person that enjoys also the details and the process behind it and just the attention, then maybe you should look at something else. I will not be buying any more Edward Green, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, but I am glad that I had this experience that rather than just, you know, talk bad about them or say something that's not right before I actually try them. So the final verdict for me is that they are overpriced and not worth your money at full price. And uh, I would definitely spend my money in something else. Then again, that's my opinion. And like I said, you like them, you have the money, it fits you well, go for it. But there are also many good alternatives, in my opinion, better alternatives out there. So uh, this might be for sale, so we will see. But you can also find everything in the written review that uh, I wrote like a week ago. Still, decent shoes. You will not be disappointed by the overall quality. Uh, the suede is nice, the fit is great, and uh, overall, I mean, if you're into this British aesthetic, I suppose they look good. So that's about it, my friends. Uh, it's very interesting to to talk like this about a brand, uh, you know, that has a, such a high reputation, but I've also seen a few more defective stitching uh, on Instagram, for example. And uh, I'm not quite unbiased. I'm, I'm not a fanboy. 
especially on these. So I, I, I am very critical of them, just as I was with uh, St. Crispin's, who is another brand that does not impress me that much. But in the end, that's up for you to decide. I try to be honest. I ho really hope you actually like the review and my criticism. Well, whether you liked it or not, that's how I feel about it. And uh, I just end up blubbering and saying the same things all over again, but that's really how I feel. In the end, I hope you really enjoyed the video, the breakdown and everything I said, and hopefully it will uh, spawn you know, a nice healthy discussion or dispute or whatever in the comments. I uh, wish I would really like to hear about uh, your thoughts. I mean, for someone this might be minor, but at these price points I expect better. So I look forward to seeing what you have to say in the comment section down below. And of course, if you're new to the channel, please leave a like, a thumbs up, follow the channel, subscribe, and soon we'll be coming back with more videos and not just about shoes. And I got a lot of uh, interesting shoemakers that uh, are sending me stuff soon. So, you know, stay tuned for those as well. But before we go, there's always a bad dad joke of the week. Since it's Halloween, what do you call a naughty sheep that's dressed as a skeleton? Bad to the bone. <laughs> oh, I should have dressed up for this one. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Take care. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.